To my YouTube listeners, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. It'll make a big difference for the Hasidic Story Project. This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. One day, a poor Yidele, a schlepper, a beggar, came to see the holy Rebbe, the seer of Leblin. And he said to him, Rebbe, please, you have to help me. I need 2,000 rubles right away, and I don't know what to do. It's a matter of life and death. I have to pay off my debts. What am I going to do, Rebbe? Please, you have to help me. The Rebbe looks at the man standing in front of him. He sees his dirty, torn clothes, his broken shoes. He looks at him and he says, wait a minute. And he walks away. And goes into his room, opens a closet. And comes back to this poor Jew. And he's carrying a strimal, a fur coat, and a pair of beautiful boots. And he says to the poor Jew, here, take this. And the poor man takes it. And the Rebbe says to him, go, go in the other room and put them on. Come back, let me see you. So the Jew goes into the back room, takes off his dirty, torn clothes, puts on this beautiful fur coat, these beautiful leather boots, a strimal. He also had a new shirt, new pants. And he looks like a king. He's wearing the clothes of the Sea of Leblin. The Rebbe says, no, come out of the room, let me see you. The poor Jew comes out, and the Rebbe says, Yes, that's what you need to look like right now. And the Schlepper says, Well, Rebbe, what am I supposed to do now? The Rebbe says, I want you to go, and he names a certain city. He says, Go there, and go to the finest hotel. Take the finest room, and Bezat Hashem, God will help you. Now this poor Schlepper, he didn't have a single penny to his name. And he was about to say to the Rebbe, The finest hotel? But how am I supposed to pay for the room? But the Seer Lubin had already turned away and was taking care of the next person that needed help. So this poor Jew, with the Rebbe's clothes, looking like a rich man, he goes to the top hotel in the city that the Rebbe had told him and asks for a room. And since the clerk at the desk looks at this Jew and sees that he's such a wealthy person, he figures such an important person as him needs the finest room in the hotel. And so he gives him the best room without asking for any money. Now, of course, in those days, there were so many Jews in Eastern Europe that even in the fine hotels, there was kosher food, and many of them were owned by religious Jews, and this hotel was no exception. So now this poor schlepper, he's in the finest room in the hotel. His meals are being brought to his room, and he's being served the finest food he's ever eaten in his life. He sits there, and he doesn't know what to do. The Rebbe told him, come to this hotel, take the finest room, but he didn't say, what do you do next? So he sits there. And he brought a safer with him, so he's learning a little bit of Torah. One day passes, and another day passes, and a third day passes. He's davening and learning in his room, just waiting for something to happen. It's true that he'd never been in such luxury his whole life, but the truth was he was a little nervous, because he was just waiting there and he didn't know what was supposed to happen. Eventually, an entire week passed, and nothing happened. He was worried that somebody would knock on the door and ask to pay the bill, but nobody had yet. And each day he was there, the bill got bigger and bigger. And he said to himself, why did the Holy Seer of Leblin send me here? I mean, I know he is a Rebbe, and for sure he knows what he's doing. And he has holy vision, and can see from one end of the world to the other. But why is it taking so much time? I've been here a whole week now. I'm really worried about the money that I owe. How long am I supposed to wait? A month? Six months? What's going on? And suddenly the Chassid couldn't take it anymore. He got dressed and went downstairs to the lobby. At least he would see other people. And so he sits down on one of the chairs in the lobby, and he realizes it was the most comfortable chair he had ever sat on in his life. He looked around the lobby and had never seen luxury like this ever before. People were coming in and out. And eventually, this Jew comes and sits next to him. And at first they were silent, but after a few minutes, the chassid who had come to the lobby in order to have a conversation started up a conversation. It turned out that this Yid was the Malamid, was the teacher who the owner of the hotel had hired to tutor his children. And the two of them hit it off right away. The teacher of the owner of this fancy hotel and this poor schlepper who was dressed as a wealthy man. And they started spending their meals together and talking every day. And eventually, the teacher and the beggar became good friends. 
And now another week passed. The schlepper was getting really worried. He was no closer to getting those 2,000 rubles. But every day, he was really getting deeper and deeper into debt. All these meals in the fanciest room in the hotel. Who was going to pay for this? Eventually, the management was going to come and knock on his door and kick him out. He didn't know what to do. And then one night, at dinner, he's eating with the teacher. And the teacher says to him, You know, it's strange. We don't really know each other. We just met a week ago. But somehow, I feel like I can really trust you. And then the teacher leans in and he says, Listen, I need you to do a favor for me. And let me tell you, you will be literally saving my life with this favor. So the schlepper, he says, sure, whatever I can help with. And he was very curious to find out how he was going to save the teacher's life. So the teacher says to him, let me tell you, I've been teaching the children of the owner of this hotel for a long time. And the father and I were very close. We're like best friends. A few years ago, my friend suddenly came into a lot of money. The owner of this hotel, he inherited a 100,000 rubles. Can you imagine? A hundred thousand rubles. So let me tell you, friends, today, that would be like tens of millions of dollars. And so, the owner, of course, he told me about it because we're good friends. And he even told me where he kept the money. It was in his room, under the pillow on his bed. Because as you know, my sweetest friends, in those days, there were no banks. People had to simply hide their money wherever they could. So the teacher continued and he said, the thing is, some time ago, my friend, the owner of this hotel, and my employer, he took his whole family on a trip, and he asked me to take care of the hotel when he was away. And one day I was alone here, and I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know how I could do such a terrible thing. But I went into his room, and I stole all of the money. And I took it home with me, and I hid it in the yard next to my house. And when the owner came back, the first thing he did was check the money. And when he saw the money was missing, he went crazy. It was terrible. The police were called in, and they questioned everyone who was staying at the hotel. They questioned the whole staff. They questioned everyone, except for me. Because the owner had considered me such a good friend, he never thought that I would ever, ever be involved in stealing his money. And to tell you the truth, the minute after I took the money, I was so ashamed. My mamish didn't know what to do with myself. I always thought I was a good, honest person. And here I was, no better than a common thief. But I want you to know I never touched any of the money. I still have the whole 100,000 rubles right outside my house. And I've always wanted to give it back to my friend. But I couldn't figure out a way to do it without him knowing that I had taken it. And to this day, I never had the strength to face him because I had betrayed him. What a terrible person I was. And how could I do that to my friend? In all this time, I've had such terrible guilt. I think about it all the time, all day long. For years now. I can't sleep at night. I can't really concentrate on my work. It's a full-on obsession, and I can't take it anymore. Please, I'm begging you. Will you help me? Will you return the hotel owner's 100,000 rubles? The chassid said, yes, of course. It would be my greatest honor to help you. But the teacher warned him. He said, listen, I have to tell you, and I'm really trusting you. I'm trusting you with my life. You cannot tell the owner of the hotel who gave you the money. Just say a stranger came over to you and asked you to give back the money and you have no idea who it was and you can't identify him. And nobody will ever suspect you because you weren't even here when the money was stolen. So tell me, can you do it? And the schlepper said, bring me the money tomorrow and I'll take care of it for you, my friend. So the next day, the teacher shows up with the 100,000 rubles wrapped in brown paper tied with a string and he gives it to the schlepper and the schlepper is holding it and he thinks to himself, A hundred thousand rubles. A hundred thousand rubles. Not only could I pay off my debt, I could be rich beyond my wildest dreams. I could afford to hire lawyers and security, and nobody would take this money away from me. But he's a chassid, and he knows that part of being a chassid is fighting the Yetzirah, the evil inclination. So he pushes those thoughts out of his mind and goes straight to the owner of the hotel. And he says to him, listen, I have something for you. And I guarantee you it's going to make you very happy. But before I give it to you, you have to promise me one thing. You won't ask me any questions and not try to find out how I got what I'm about to give you. So the owner, he doesn't understand what's going on. He says, okay, sure, whatever. I promise. Now what is it? The schlepper hands him this package, brown paper tied with a string. And the owner, he slowly unties the string 
opens the package. And he can't believe his eyes. Gewalt! Oi vey, Gewalt! He starts crying. Tears of joy. The 100,000 rubles that was stolen from me years ago. I can't believe it. And he was about to ask, Where did you get this from? And the Hasid said to him, Listen, somebody came to me on the street, just handed me this package. I don't know who he is. I don't know anything about it. The owner said, Thank you so much. You have no idea. Thank you so much. And then the owner caught himself for a minute and he said, you know what? This is a lot of money. I can see by your clothes that you're a very wealthy person. But to have a hundred thousand rubles in your hand, that's a big temptation for anyone, no matter how much money you have. You could have just run away with this money. You didn't need to come here and give it back to me. So I want to give you a reward. And he counts out ten thousand rubles and gives it to the schlepper. He puts it in his hand. He says, this is for you, my friend. May Hashem bless you to always be wealthy. And he also said to him, and your whole stay here, please let it be on me. I want to cover everything. And so the schlepper, he returns back to the seer of Lublin, so happy he's skipping for joy. And he returns the shrimal and the fur coat, the boots and the clothes. And the seer says, no, how did it go? This Rebbe, this was such a test. This was such a nisayon. I didn't know what was going to happen. There I am in the hotel room day after day, thinking they're going to come after me. Maybe they're going to arrest me. How am I ever going to pay off my debt here? Then I meet the teacher. He tells me a story. He gives me the money. And as a reward, I got 10,000 rubles, Rebbe. Not only can I pay off my debts, I have enough money to be wealthy myself. Thank you, Rebbe. I don't know how to thank you for what you did for me. And the seal of said, listen, I'm very happy for you, my sweetest friend. Happy you can pay off your debt and start a new life, but to tell you the truth, wasn't me doing you a favor. It was you doing me a favor. And the schlepper says, Rebbe, how can that be? What kind of favor could I possibly have done for you? The Rebbe said, you know, they call me the seer of Lublin because I have a holy vision and I can see into people's lives. And this teacher, for years, couldn't sleep at night. And he would stay up all night davening, crying to Hashem, saying, please, Hashem, you have to help me. I have to return the money and I don't know what to do. Please, Hashem, you have to help me. He said in me, I heard his prayers every single night. And I was in pain with him because the teacher couldn't sleep. I also couldn't sleep. But now that you've solved this problem, I'll finally get a good night's sleep for the first time in years. So thank you, my friend, for helping me. And thank you, Hashem, for helping you. I want to thank the newest supporters of this podcast, the Fleischmann family. Now, there's plenty of Fleischmann families around the world, and I don't really know where they're from because they didn't respond to my message. But if they're listening, they know who they are. And thank you very much for becoming supporters of this podcast. My sweetest friends, every contribution is incredibly gratefully appreciated. And if you'd like to become a contributor, just go to my website. I'm sure you know where it is. HasidicStory.com, H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. And in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful Shabbos and a week filled with Hasidic stories in only a revealed good way. Until our next story together, 
Sei gesund, my sweetest friends. Sei gesund. Lechaim.